By the turn of the 20th century, New Orleans had long been a veritable cultural melting pot. Out of that unique culture would be born a new form of African-American music, a blend of African, Latin, and European forms and styles. This music would be called jazz. In the early days, jazz was played primarily by African-American musicians, and they often played it in the red light districts of New Orleans. And because of this, it was considered immoral music. Even a publication as prestigious as the New York Times wrote an anti-jazz article. But these efforts did nothing to stop the rise and the spread of jazz. In 1917, the military closed the New Orleans Red Light District. But by that time, the music had caught the attention of a young man who lived in the neighborhood. His name was Louis Armstrong, and he would go on to become a sensation in New Orleans. Jazz was one of the most innovative and original forms of African-American cultural expression. Yet, the first jazz recording was made by an all-white band from New Orleans. Their song sold over a million copies and introduced a watered-down form of jazz to a broader American audience. But it was a group of black soldiers who would take jazz itself to an international audience. During World War I, James Reese Europe was a leader in the Harlem Hellfighters, a segregated troupe of African-American soldiers, but he was also a very gifted musician and composer. He started a band of black military men who played the new music throughout Europe. And even after the war was over, that band continued to spread jazz throughout the Western world. With the talents of pioneers such as Buddy Bolden and Jelly Roll Morton, Bessie Smith and Mamie Smith, as well as Armstrong and Ellington, the music became so popular that the Roaring Twenties came to be known as the Jazz Age. From its humble and controversial origins, jazz had become the first original, sophisticated instrumental music in American history. Jazz is America's genuine classical music. <laughs> 